everyone. I am Erica of the storytellingjeweler.com and this is No One Has to Be the Lawn or weekly beading class at the Storytelling Jeweler Facebook page and in the Storytelling Beading Club to make sure that even if we don't have beading shows and maybe our local bead shows are not working uh, properly at the moment, we still can come together, beat together, and most importantly, get to know new beading friends and inspire each other and admire each other's creations. In the meanwhile, I see Verla joining us. Welcome, Verla. Good omir to Zin. And Tanya is here. And Sarah, and Sarah says that she can hear me and see me, and that is always a big relief. <laughs> and Marianske is here, also from the Netherlands. And Miriam is here. And Petra is here. And Maria. And we have a Facebook user. So I would like to say I am broadcasting at the same time on the Facebook page and in the Facebook group. And since the Facebook group is like, a closed thing. It is like no one can see what's going on in the storytelling bidding club who is not a member, not even my broadcasting program. So if you want to give permission to my broadcasting program so it can see your name and your face and not only a general Facebook user, then please click on the link that I have posted at the beginning and I will post it again. And you have to do it only once, and next week the program will already recognize you. And in the meanwhile, also Anita joined us and Eleanor joined us. She's working on her first Caravaggio. How nice! And Sharon, Sharon is not beating but listening. It's good to have you here, Sharon. I hope you are well. And Liv is here also, and Teresa, and Claire is here, and Iris is here, another Facebook user, and Lutka is here, and Kata, and Sarah is here, and Marion, and Aniko, and Teresa, we have a new member, I think, and Donna, and Kiki, and Anne, and Nancy, both Nancys are here. Nancy, I just wanted to make sure I was about to ask if you are here because I know this is your first time. Wonderful. And Corinna and Annaline and Joanna, Deb, Diana, Zuzi, Vita is here. Janine. So ladies, again, very good company. And if you haven't heard your name, then you can know that my program doesn't see your name. So you need to click the link if you want my program to see your name. So, and Gunel, hello Gunel. Welcome ladies, we are going to have a beautiful topic today. Frozen flowers, even if as I hear from you, at most corners of the Northern Hemisphere, the winter is basically gone. Here also in the Netherlands, I am I am living in Amsterdam in the, in the Netherlands for nearly six years now, unbelievable. And two weeks ago when we came together to bead, then I was telling you like, yay, we have snowfall and how rare and how beautiful it is. And I am going to hopefully ice skating and the canals are frozen. And then just a couple of days later, it was like uh, snow gone, ice gone, some of the skaters gone through the ice into the water of the canals and spring is here. So I think the frozen flowers, it was like great timing because we start to see uh, the first spring flowers, but I also saw some a couple uh, a week ago when we went biking already there uh, still there was like a little little bit of snow so 
this bracelet, I think it is a perfect symbol of this transition between winter and spring. So I hope you will enjoy it. And I am really looking forward to seeing your variations. Last week, we were working on the melodrama earrings. I have my pair, my Pantone colored yellow and gray pair here with me. I love it. And I was wearing it several times already during this week. And I have seen many beautiful versions from you. And it was a wonderful experience. And I just wanted to show some of the beautiful melodrama jewels that you made during the past week. So here are right away two versions from Ginny. And I think they are beautiful. And I especially like the one on the left. It's a very brave color combination of some greenish, yellowish avocado, nearly avocado, tila beads, and then purple half tila and a purple drop, and it's great. So big applause for Ginny. It's very, very nice. Then we have here another very interesting variation. And this is made by Marion. And Marion, we did melodrama in romantic soft colors, attached a bezeled rivoli in the middle, and then she attached it to a piece of bead embroidered backing. And what a good idea it is. It is very beautiful, Marianne. And then the third one I wanted to show you. A brooch by Zuzi, queen of brooches. And Zuzi chose just the most fitting brooch base for this motif, I think. And I love how well the color of the tila beads goes together with the color of the glass drop in metal setting. And recently, I started to put together a series of articles for the storytelling beading blog called Club Designs. And Club Designs always feature jewels made by you that are variations of a design that we beaded together. And today I published the article about melodrama with many of your beautiful, beautiful jewels. And I think it is, oh, it's, you have to check it out. Don't go away now to check it out. Stay with me, beat some frozen flowers. But like after work or during the weekend, tomorrow when you get up to enjoy Saturday, brew a coffee, of course and then go on and admire all the melodramas. And please leave a comment for your fellow beaders, telling them how nicely and nice jewels they have done. Maybe share the article and invite, most importantly, invite your beading friends to join us next week. In the meanwhile, also, Joanna joined us. And Nancy says, I am so excited to be doing this with all of you. It's good to have you here, Nancy. And Ola says, somebody hit my new precious icons. I was not there. I was not there, Ola. Keep looking. They are coming in this seventh step only, so don't worry. And Verle is also first time. Oh my God, this is such a nice occasion, isn't it, ladies? And Julie is also here. I haven't seen you for a while. Good to have you back. And or another Teresa. And Mechtab is here. And Itza is here. Hello, Itza. And Kay is here again. Hello, ladies. 64 of us at the moment. Isn't it wonderful? In the meanwhile, you can already, of course, download the, art, the printable version of the file. I will post it here, the link. I'm pretty sure that you already have it, 
but just also for our newcomers, you can head over to the storytellingjeweler.com slash. No one has to be the one slash. And there you can find a PDF file to help you follow along the workshop. You can make your choice. You can either download the file for free or you can support the broadcast by paying five euros for it. So if you have any any questions we have many newcomers by the way also chloe joining us hello chloe and patty is a new reader i think so if anyone has any questions then please feel free to ask i see all the comments coming in also from the club also from the page i am doing my best to keep an eye on all of them sometimes sometimes i, I don't notice something but i'm pretty sure that if somebody will uh, see your question they will help or just bring it to my attention one more time please before we would start beating then i would like to thank you for all the support that you show us i was like so many times getting emotional this week and yeah, you ladies are amazing. When I see you sharing the articles, showing uh, showing your jewels, that's that's wonderful. And today I received a beautiful message from Nicoline, for example. Uh, she was hoping to join us today, but but I think she couldn't make it. But it was really nice to to read how much. How much our get togethers mean for her and also i want to thank shyla my little swiss sister from switzerland guess what she sent me a package and she baked cookies and she sent me cookies <laughs> and i enjoyed them together with my coffee it was a panettone also some chocolates from switzerland and thank you so much <laughs> And Nancy is asking, how can she join the club? The club is, I, I just, uh, I just uh, posted the link for it, Nancy. And it is a little like sheltered community of like, let's say storytelling beaters and you know, it started out as like a support group and somebody has a question about the design, then she can ask and I can help. Uh, but it became so much more. So please click the link to join it. And Yvette always uh, admits new beaters to the club uh, on Mondays. So it might take some, some days uh but you will see it is it is a very good place <laughs> and Nico nicoline you are here it's great <laughs> welcome nicoline and yeah tanya says she was actually the one inviting verle for today i am happy that verle got the vibes yesterday for joining today by reading my post Thank you for inviting her. And I'm glad that you accepted uh, Tanya's invitation, Verla. <laughs> so let's get started, right, ladies? Frozen flowers are waiting for us. And yeah, let's do a material check, shall we? So this is my list and let's do it together i will also check my beading board uh, bead mat and you can also check your bead mat so if we start from the middle you will need i will always say how many beads you will need for one motif because you know making a bracelet that is just one option that i saw fitting for this design but you could make very pretty earrings. You could make a very pretty pendant. 
or as some of you did last week, also with melodrama, Angelica, Angelica uh, Sommer, she's not here with us today. She doesn't have time today, but uh, we miss you, Angelica. But she beaded three motifs of the melodrama and then she connected them into a necklace with one in the middle, two on the sides, and then a glass drop in metal setting hanging from the middle. And you can do the same with the frozen flowers. And of course, the best possible option, you can beat a whole set of jewels. So I will be curious to see what will you be doing. And what you need for one motif is you will need eight pieces of super duo beads. Then you will need eight pieces of half tila beads. You will need eight pieces of four millimeter fire polished beads. Then you will need 16 pieces of three millimeter bicon beads. I use Preciosa bicon beads. <laughs> this, yeah, frozen color, the uh, Aqua Bohemica mm, matted with the matted effect. And then you will need also some seed beads. I used two colors of number 15 Miyuki seed beads. And you also need some Miyuki Telica size 11s. And Miriam says, three millimeter bicons will be double the amount you wrote in the tutorial. Sorry for the mistake, ladies. I will correct it. So yeah, double the amount. For one motif, you need 16. I hope no one is in trouble because of my mess up with maths. It's easy to make a mistake with numbers. I'm counting beads. Sorry about that. And just looking at the comments. And Chloe says, I am so pleased I can use up super duos in your design this week. I have so many to use. And Joanna says, me too. I have lots of super duos. So Shall we focus on super duos also in the near future? I can do that. So, and let's get started. And Susie, thank you for, for helping out Nancy. I think Nancy is asking about the club because she is also the member of the Estrella Beading Group because all of my workshops have a dedicated Facebook group to ask questions, but also there is Nancy Vaughn General Club, the Storytelling Beading Club, for everyone who uh, bought ever a tutorial or a bead or participated in a workshop with me. So let's get started. I will switch also to my second camera now, so you can see what I am doing trying to make the most of the lightning what I have. And I will also put the illustrations one by one on the screen, but you can also open the tutorial on another device or you can print it, of course, so it's easier to follow it. Miriam also has tons of super duos. So, I am working with Fireline 0.12 millimeter or 4LB and I am using about a wingspan of Fireline. I work with, I think, a tulip beading needle. So, you think, uh, and, uh, and yeah, don't go longer with your Fireline than what is comfortable. We will be joining, by the way, the motifs one by one. Usually when I design a bracelet that consists of several different motifs, several motifs, then I try to uh, beat them in one go. But this is 
an exception. We will beat every motif one by one. So you don't need like a very, very long thread. And let's start with the super duos. And let's start by picking up eight super duo beads. Always please try to check if the second hole of a two hole bead is open properly because sometimes it can happen that it is clogged and it's, it is a nasty surprise if you discover it later. I will try and switch on my second lamp. Just a moment. So I noticed that my bead mat is a bit is a bit uh, darker than I like it to be. <laughs> so in the meanwhile, also Georgi joined us. Welcome, Sia Georgi. So I have. Lamps. I have lamps coming down on me, and I have eight pieces of super duo beads on my needle. I will bead one more time through all the super duo beads to join them into a circle. Starting from the first one that I picked up, I bead through the same hole as before. I leave a tail of about five, six inches or 10 to 12, uh, 10 to 12 centimeters. And it will help me with uh, keeping proper tension. And I bead through the very first super duo, also a uh, third time. And somebody from the group watching says, I miss your beading sessions. Oh, I'm sorry that you can't join so much as you would like to. I hope that you will be able to join again soon. So here is my circle of super duo beads that I beaded when following the first image. And now, Optionally, you can use also a teacup bead. I just discovered them recently and then and I think they are super cute. And you can basically use a teacup bead everywhere where we normally put a rhinestone, a suvon rhinestone. Here it would also be possible to put a suvon rhinestone if you don't have a teacup bead. Or you can use also something else. You can use a flat lentil bead also, for example. So I am still exiting the first hole of a super duo. And then I pick up a teacup bead and I pick up a number 15 seed bead. I bead back. I let everything fall on my thread. And then I bead back through the teacup, to the bottom of my teacup. Or as Tanya was saying, coffee cup in my case would be a lot more fitting. But yes, Tarman decided to call them, call them teacups. We have to lobby ladies. <laughs> I, I think they might, maybe they haven't heard of coffee time with Erica yet. We need coffee, coffee cups, a coffee cup shaped bead. That would be our favorite, I think. Someone likes the colors I am using. Thank you so much. I was super happy with them. <laughs> and Esther is here also. Hello, Esther. So now I am attaching the a bead at one more point. So I will bead through the first hole of the super duo that is exactly opposite of the one that I am exiting, that I was exiting before picking up the teacup bead. So then when I pull my thread, 
properly, then the teacup, it will be like the middle of the flower. That's why actually I like it so much because it gives like the impression of a dimensional flower, I think. Oh my God, Kata says coffee cup beads in turquoise. That would be your signature bead, I think, for the storytelling, uh, for the storytelling beading club. Would be wonderful. <laughs> So now I will bead back. I bead up through the teacup bead one more time. Again, I bead through the number 15 in the middle. And then I bead down through the teacup bead. And now I will bead through the first super duo that I was exiting before picking up the teacup. By the way, if you, I feel at this mom moment that I was not holding proper tension. So the circle of super duos, of my super duos, is a little bit looser than how I like it. So I am beading through all of them one more time just to fix this. And somebody says, I love this design. I'm really happy about it. <laughs> By the way, funny how, how Kata said coffee cup beads in turquoise. You know, today, when we were talking about Preciosa in the club, then Annaline was joking that one, she has a dream for me that one day I will buy my Preciosa. <laughs> so then we can manufacture all the beautiful colors that we want because Precio, they will discontinue Capri Blue, Capri Blue. I know that it's not good news. I am really not happy about it. It's something, unfortunately, that just happens. But Annalyn thinks that <laughs> me deciding that Preciosa will for sure make, uh, will make sure that uh, Capri Blue would not be discontinued. I think she is very right. And Sarah is asking if the motif should be flat. Actually, not Sarah. It is like a uh, like a little ball. ball, ball. <laughs> so the the middle should be raised. The half tilas actually are the ones that I really like standing a bit diagonally. So this is how much volume the, the little motifs have. And Esther, not gone yet. I brought up like several hundred of the chatons, but it will be gone after, after, one, after it's gone what, what is available. So, and let's continue with step number three. No, Sarah, Sarah, don't sit on it, please. Not this time. <laughs> Not this time. For the newcomers, uh, for our new beaders, last year, it happened a couple of times. By the way, in, sorry, in step number three, I turned into the opposite direction by beading through the outside hole, through the open hole of a super duo that I was exiting. And then I will be filling half tilla beads between the open holes of the super duo beads. And please keep good tension 
And just as Sarah asked, it's a very good point. It does not have to be flat. The motif needs to be a little bit cupped. So pull, pull your thread. Notice I'm exiting a super duo. I pick up a half tila. I'm entering another super duo and then over and over again until I go all around the little flower. Oh, Joanna, I didn't want to make you sad. I'm so sorry. And Lutka says that it's also her favorite color. <gasps> I'm trying to now think about some good news that can cheer you up after like telling you that Capri Blue will, Capri Blue will not be available in the future. So I'm, I'm thinking about some good news. I think good news are also that I finished taking pictures of the Preciosa components that we got when we put together the first generation of our Preciosa boxes. So they are going up to the e-shop uh, during the next couple of days and they will be available one by one. So for example, if you liked Capri, Capri Blue or if you liked something else, then from your box, then you can grab more of them. Also, I will be sending out a questionnaire for everyone who got the Preciosa boxes. I, I saw your happy pictures. I saw your I saw your uh, enthusiastic posts, but we would like to ask for a little bit of feedback to make sure that if there is something to improve, then we can improve it. We want to know what we did right and what would need uh, uh, some maybe improvement or just changing something. So please look out for an email from us. And also, we will be sending out together with the questionnaire an extra little surprise for those we didn't tell in advance, but an extra little surprise for those of you who uh, adopted one or more or, or all four colors of the Preciosa boxes. So you will be able to, to buy more from your favorite colors with a bit of discount. I hope it will make you happy and it will and that it will help you starting building up your preciosa stash. And in the meanwhile, Jonah says, I shall have to visit the e-shop when we are done here. That's always a good idea, Jonah. <laughs> and really appreciate it. <laughs> And Teresa says, I am using simulated metallic nebula blue teacup beads. That sounds amazing. <laughs> and someone says, I went to local craft store for three millimeter bicons and found it interesting that, that they had locks on the Swarovski beads that the clerk had to get them for you. No three millimeters left, very few beads left, mainly flatbacks. So out of luck for the project today. I'm sorry about that. Like Swarovski will be gone. I think like most of the bead shops did like big purchases and they will be, but they will be gone. But in this case, for the bracelet, I think you will be okay if you go for three millimeter fire polished beads. They should also work. And uh, most importantly, Preciosa is there for you. The ladies who got the boxes, 
they can, I think, tell you that the quality and the colors of Preciosa are, are they are great. <laughs> so we don't have to be that sad about Swarovski. And Teresa says, Susie, thanks for the tooth for the heart. Yeah, also on the blog, you can find another article from this week. And Susie wrote us a tutorial for a bead embroidered heart. And thank you so much, Susie. And Julie says, I got mine last week and loved them. Had to share my special treat with my husband and son. <laughs> We will have a second generation of boxes coming soon. So don't worry if you did not grab one for the first time. Just you can also send us a message to keep you in mind and we, we, we can send you a reminder if they are again available for pre-order. And Sarah is using two and a half millimeter fire polished beads. That's a good idea, Sarah. Thank you so much for sharing it. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, you can turn to the opposite direction by beading through the outside hole of your half tila bead. And then you will need to fill in four millimeter fire polished beads between the outside holes, the open holes of the half tila beads. Someone is still waiting for Preciosa boxes. If you are in, are you in the States? I don't see your name, but if you are in the States, then some of the boxes are still traveling, but many of them arrived this week already. So hopefully you will get them soon. Marianska says that she sees a bit of difference between the size of Preciosa and Swarovski bicons like for what i tried they worked well the preciosa bicons mm, when i put one next to each other it seemed to be okay but there can be a small let's see i have here also swarovski so maybe a very, very, very small. On my needle there is Swarovski and in my left hand you can see a Presio. Oh, it's a bit blurred, sorry. So in my, on my needle you can see a Preciosa. Oh, sorry, <laughs> keeps blurring the cam camera. Okay, trying to find focus again. And Kata says, oh, I actually put the Hyacin 3 mm Swarovski and Preciosa Bicons next to each other. Cannot make the Cinderella job if I mix them. <laughs> Teresa says, I hope that you don't have to redo your patterns because of the slight size difference between Sarovsky and Preciosa. That would be like a Goliath job, but what I tried so far, it works. So I really hope that I will not have to, but yeah. Uh, 
Like, luckily, I am, yeah, I have Swarovski in my designs, but not like an enormous amount. And I was not relying on them solely. So for me, it's not as big of a problem, I guess, as for some of the designers who have, for example, like designs that are 100% Swarovski or like nearly everything Swarovski or made for very specific Swarovski shapes because that must hurt and I, I am really sorry for them. Antia Preciosa doesn't make the, the same shape. <laughs> and Daniela says something in French, which I unfortunately don't understand, but I am really happy that you are here, Daniela. And I am still feeling my four millimeter fire polished. Teresa is also waiting for her boxes in the meanwhile. I really started to like this milky effect and opal effect of the fire polished beads, by the way. I think it's really pretty and I like how it mixes well with like different finishes. I have matte metallic half tila beads then milky opal fire polished beads and the super duos are again a bit different and i think that it comes together nicely and after i added all the four millimeter fire polished beads i beaded through a couple more of the fire polished beads and half tilas in between, of course, because I don't want to start adding the next row of uh, beads that uh, right after the first one. So I have to continue a little bit before adding the next the next uh, row. And as Teresa says, yeah, there was an article by Melinda Barta and Yes, there are. I I agree that some of the designers who uh, who use lots of Swarovski, they are badly affected by it. And I'm very sorry to see that because, like, making a beading tutorial, that's not five minutes job. That can take weeks to like, and it's not like a quickie, but like a proper big tutorial then it takes weeks. It takes weeks and to be rewarded for your work, I mean also for the ones who make a living from beading, it takes many times years to earn back the, or months to earn back the price of the work that went into writing a tutorial. So at this, it can be really hard. And I really hope that, that Preciosa will step up so they can minimize the damage done to designers. And in step five, I am adding groups of Miyuki Delica 11, number 15 seed bead, I use a second color here, and another Miyuki Delica 11 between the fire polished beads. And I would like to show you my finished sample uh, that there will be two rows of, uh, of this group of beads on top of each other. So first we will add the top row and that will slide up slightly over the outside hole of the half tina, and then there will be another row when we add the same groups of beads, the Delica, number 15, and Delica. And we will attach the bicons between that second row, between those second groups. So I am starting 
out from a 4 mm fire polished bead, I picked up Delica, number 15 Delica, and then I bead through the next fire polished bead. And it doesn't go here, next to the half tilla bead, but it should slide, the beads should slide on top of the half tilla beads. And you can, of course, use the same color as in the middle of the motif and then on the edge of the motif between the bicone beads, or you can use you can use a different one or you can use the same one. And Tanya says, if you look at the motifs from the side, they look like cakes, kind of cupcakes, cupcakes. And so we have again a dessert. <laughs> I'm all the time thinking about, okay, not all the time, but many times I'm, I, I love desserts and I love chocolate. And now I will be reminded of sweets and unhealthy treats even more every time when I look at my frozen flowers bracelet. <laughs> but I don't mind it. <laughs> and Joanna likes it. I'm really happy, Joanna. And Lutka is asking if I wear a new pair of earrings. In fact, it's one of those ones that we did last year. It's the Linda earring. And it is a completed pair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Joanna says, Tanya Quintel, you're so correct. Now I want to bake a cake. <laughs> So, teacup cakes, as Teresa said. <laughs> and tell me in the meanwhile, ladies, what are you working on? Is it going to be a bracelet? Is it going to be a pendant? Is it going to be a pair of earrings? I am curious to hear. And also that what kind of colors are you, are you using? And Mectab uh, is using round beads instead of the three millimeter bicons. Mectab, how is it working out? Do the round beads behave well on the edge of the motif? But we have a we have a restaurant <laughs> nearby that is called Mectab. It's a Turkish restaurant, and I always think about you when I see it. <laughs> and Miriam is making the bracelet. So now I am moving on to the second layer of seed beads. And I am doing the same as before. I am exiting a 4 millimeter fire polished bead. And then I pick up a group of Delica, number 15 and another Delica, and I bead through the next fire polished bead. And when I pull my thread, then you see that the second group, it slides under the first group slightly. And I will be attaching the next row to the second row of, of seed beads. And Sarah says, I was thinking bracelet, but I hate putting motifs together, so I think it will be earrings. <laughs> I know, Sarah, sorry about not coming up with like a second way of doing the motifs so, can, so you can beat it in one go. <laughs> Iris is also doing earrings. And then Tanya says, beading together is always so much fun. I already have two motifs finished for more uh, in for more colors. I like very much, but never join them together. And guess what? I am happy with it. Yes, stepping out of my comfort zone worked. Tanya, I'm so curious. You you wrote me already earlier this week that you are going to use like a new color combination what you haven't used before. 
and I'm very curious to see what it is. Every month, I, I try to set a challenge, a little step challenge in the Storytelling Reading Club. And in January, we had the challenge to beat something in the colors announced by Pantone, the yellow and gray combination. And I think it worked out really, really well. There is an article with a collection of jewels on the blog. And in February, we have a challenge to beat something. It's a very simple ch challenge, or what sounded as a very simple challenge at first. And I said, like, beat something else. Beat something that you haven't beaded yet. Maybe a new color combination. Or like, if you have never beaded a brooch, then beat a brooch. If you have never tried embroidery, then try embroidery. Just try challenging yourself a bit. And you will see that there will be exciting new discoveries along the way. Tanya is a proof, right? <laughs> and then she says, your instructions are so clear. This is going so well, especially for me, not too familiar with beating. Mostly, I do kumihimo. Thank you so much for sharing your skills with us. Nancy, it is a pleasure and thank you for joining me, joining us. And I'm, I'm really glad that it goes well. I was thinking about asking you that, how are you doing? But I was not doubting that it's going well. You also, I know that you, did, you started out beading not so long ago, but you already beaded Estrella. And that's amazing, Nancy. You have like fellow Estrella, Estrella lovers, by the way, here, many of them. And someone says, I will do earrings because I do have the right amount of bicons for a pair of earrings. Donna, lost track of time. <laughs> and Tanya says, yes, two things I have never done. Combining these colors and soon for the first time the L2 cabochon. I can't wait. And I'm really curious what will you say, Tanya. Tanya is a fellow Estrella lover. <laughs> and Sarah, Sarah also made matching, uh, matching, matching bracelets, actually two versions. And they are like, wow, I was painting when I saw it. <laughs> they are especially the big one, it's beautiful. I really hope that you are very, very proud of yourself, Sarah, because it's amazing. And step seven, we are getting to my precious Precio Preciosa beads. And now what you need to do is, you, are, you should be exiting a group of beads in the second layer, at the bottom layer, and then you pick up two bicon beads. You bead through the next group of Delica, number 15, Delica. And then again, you pick up two Preciosa beads and bead through the next group. And this is how you bead all around until you have added eight groups, eight pairs of Preciosa beads. And thank you for your kind words, Joanna. I hope that Nancy will join, the, join us in the club. And I'm pretty sure that she will like it there. And someone is asking, speaking of Estrella, are you planning more workshops? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Eva had just asked me at the beginning of the week that if they managed to find, Eva is my sister, who is 
the responsible person in the warehouse i mean like responsible for putting together your packages with some helpers and she asked me what shall she do what shall they do if they can find a little bit of extra time and i told that told her that make estrella kits please so they will be coming there will be estrella zoom classes also they were putting together your packages for all the all the uh, shooting star kids so many of them were traveling already today and then one by one the classes the other classes will come to but one by one <laughs> Lemonade for sure will yeah, follow. And also, uh, also Marrakesh. And I beat it all around. I added the pairs of bicon beads. And now what I will be doing that I repeat the thread pass, but after beating through the first bicon from a pair, I will pick up a number 15 seed bead and then I continue through the second bicon from the pair I bead through delica number 15 delica that is between two pairs of bicons I bead through the next bicon and again I fill in a number 15 seed bead and this is how I bead all around only difference is I will show you when I want to connect my motif to an already beaded motif because I want to make a bracelet then at the connection instead of picking up a new number 15 seed bead I will bead through a number 15 in the already existing motif. So this is how I this is how I join the new motif to the old one. And then I continue and when I'm making a connection that for sure then for sure I repeat the thread pass all around at least one more time, but even better two more times. Marrakesh, Jardim Majorel. It's called Jardim Majorel. I messed it up, Sarah. Jar Jardim Majorel is a garden in Marrakesh that inspired the bracelet I am talking about. So, <laughs> it's, you know, my highly organized building room. It just got so much easier to find everything. So... This is the bracelet I am talking about. It is a combination of bead embroidery and bead weaving. So it will come, but step by step. <laughs> it will come, ladies. Here come <laughs> and thank you so much for your enthusiasm. <laughs> so I'm nearly done with this new motif. I am adding the last number 15 seed bead and then I will be beading around the motif and I nearly forgot ladies I have I have 
two new designs for you. Just a sec, I have to grab them. And one of them I already, already showed you that is coming next week for no one has to be alone. So this is the motif that we can work on together next week. And I have a problem. I think it has never happened to me before. By the way, that's a preciosa drop in matte crystal. And I think it has never happened to me before, but I can't find a name for this. I need your help, seriously. So please don't hold yourself back. I am really looking forward to some suggestions. Without a name, I can't schedule, no one has to be the one, so we can't leave until we have a name for this. <laughs> Tanya, I remember, and we have two versions of the cuff, so when we schedule the bracelet, then if somebody wants a longer cuff, then we can send it. So it's not a problem, and I will be happy if you try, if you give the embroidery a go. I think your creativity, it will, you will like it. <laughs> and Kata says, I love today's piece. It will be a bracelet. I wasn't sure how it will look like, but I'm happy. <laughs> and Esther says, it looks like the British flag. That's so true, it's like a bit of a, yeah. Oh my God, somebody needs to beat it in like red and blue and, and white. Some of our UK friends, what do you think? <laughs> I have to beat it again in the same color so I can have a pair of earring. earrings. <laughs> Miriam says, eyes cross. Then Iris says match. Esther says crossing path. I really like that, Esther. Iris says Mars. Kata says it looks like a medieval rider medal. Kereste Slovak. It's the, oh my God, how, it, how do you call it in English? The Templars, the Knight Templars. <laughs> Someone says at the crossroads, Celtic cross, Maria likes it. <laughs> Patty says, Medal of Honor. That's also a good name. So, how shall we decide? Tanya was also thinking about something with crossing the name. <gasps> Esther, this is a good one. Templar star. I like it. What do you ladies think about Templar star? I removed my beading from the second bead mat so you can see the, the earring better and the inspiration can hit. <laughs> but if you if you want, I can show uh, show it again, of course. Mm. Teresa is asking if I want a single word name. Not necessarily. We had like frozen flowers that was or like two words. So it doesn't matter if there are two words in the name. And yeah, Esther is suggesting a a poll, a poll, and Tanya is also suggesting a poll. So we can we should do a poll afterward. <laughs> Merle is suggesting Shandor Star. I don't like to name things after me. It's like oh. <laughs> Nancy says, Templar Star sounds very classy. It's 
a good one, right? And Tanya says, with Templar Star, we are back to our star theme. That's so true. I didn't even realize it at first, but Tanya is right. We are beating lots of stars these days. <laughs> and actually, actually, one more star tutorial, at least, is coming. Zuzi is suggesting crossroads. Okay, ladies, I think that we need a poll. We have so many good ideas that we need a poll. And in the meanwhile, I managed to attach my, my second motif. So now, uh, my, uh, well, it's actually not the second, it's my, it's my fifth motif. So now I will need one more. I will need a sixth, sixth motif for my bracelet. So soon it can be something, soon it can be done. And I think it will also look nice with this blues I am wearing. Bit of purple, a bit of blue. I, I'm, I'm very happy with it. <laughs> Teresa says, the Knights Templars have a slightly controversial reputation, so that's also something to consider. Susie likes the cross in the name. Karina says, Alexander Star. <laughs> Teresa says, Crossing Star or Star Cross. Lutka Rast is it's a crossroad. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do a poll afterward. And do you ladies want to see the one that I made for you uh, for not next week, but the one after that? So what we can be together in two weeks? Or shall it be a surprise? <laughs> It will be a smaller motif because we need, for that we need something quicker, a little bit that can be done in one hour, or under one hour exactly, because I will be participating in a series of workshops and we will have the last session of the workshops on Friday at six o'clock my time in the evening and I would like to be there so we will have like a one hour exactly one hour class in two weeks and we can't go longer <laughs> and <laughs> Kathy, Kathy says oh my goodness no <laughs> Tanya wants to see it Patty has one more suggestion for the name, Unity Cross. <laughs> Ladies, patience is not your thing, right? When it comes to new design. <laughs> design, so this is it. And I hope you like it. It's fast and really fun to bead. And again, something that you can use as earrings or you can use it. I think it would be great as a bracelet. You can connect the motifs either by the points or at two places here. You can also make a necklace or pendant as always when we are working with, with motifs. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a cute one, isn't it? <laughs> so again, if you have some leftover beads, then this will be idea for those leftover beads. As for one motif, you need only four pieces of gem duos, four pieces of half tilas, and then number 15 seed beads, number 11 delicas, uh, optionally, you can put a rhinestone or a teacup bead in the middle 
and if you like you can uh, you can uh, add a gas tropic metal setting of course up to you no Ola doesn't have the bicos yet <laughs> I hope you find them. <laughs> so, ladies, so this one is coming up next week, and then this one will come up in two weeks. And I really hope that you enjoyed today's class. I will put together a poll from your name suggestions for next week's designs, design because without that we can't announce the, the class. And thank you so much for participating today. And please share the video with your beading friends. Please invite them for next week. Follow the YouTube channel and join me again next week. I am already, I am already looking forward and I am wishing you a nice rest of the day and a peaceful, creative weekend. Be well, ladies. Bye-bye.